Good morning. Today we're looking at the Linksys Analog Internet Phone Adapter. This is the PAP2T-NA. And uh, there's a little picture of it and it looks a lot smaller in person. This is the first unboxing. Okay. Seems to have power, internet, and two phone lines. Seems to have a number of LEDs here. We'll get. Okay, I hooked up uh, a cable to my router, hooked up a cable to my phone line, and now I'll just plug this thing in and let's see what happens. Mine has some very bright LEDs. It's a power button. This is a very bright one that seems to blink a lot. And, uh,. That's about all it does right now. I'm going to get in here and try to configure it and see if I can get it going. I looked at my router device list and the D my router's DHCP assigned the Linksys PAP an IP address of 163. So uh, I generally don't like trust DHCP. I'm going to see if I can get in there and maybe configure it. I, I'll probably give it a fixed IP address outside of the DHCP range of my router. But well, let's just keep going. If you Google uh, PAP2 configuration, you'll find a bunch of different uh, sites that tell you how to configure this thing. Is what they say to do. Okay, the phone line's plugged in. They say to press the pound or the the star key four times. Hold, hold first. One, two, three, four. It's clicking, making noise. Well, followed by the pound key. Then one, one, zero, pound. Well, that didn't work. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, four. Sakura configuration menu. Please enter option followed by the pound key or hang up to exit. Okay, let's try it. Now it seems to have heard me. Let's try it again. Configuration menu. One, one, zero. One, nine, two, dot, one, six, eight, dot, one, dot, one, six, three. Sakura configuration menu. Please enter. Well, there we go. It's IP address is uh, 163. Okay, I opened a web browser and I typed 192.168.1.163 and here we can kind of see the configuration menu. Okay, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the latest firmware. I googled uh, Linksys PAP2 firmware download and the, the top link was uh, cisco.com and what the first page they have says, oh, it's end of life, we won't support you, but now I found this one that has version 5.1.6 5.1.6 uh, firmware and you can download it here and you can see the device I bought already came with 5.1.6 firmware so we're not going to bother updating the firmware now, now I selected the, the system menu and one of the first things I always like to do when I get a device is not use DHCP. You can see for DHCP it says yes. And I'm going to assign it a, a static uh, address. And uh, the DHCP server on my router is configured to go from 100 to 200 on assigning it and it assigned this device 163. But uh, I'm going to assign it something outside of of the DHCP range. So I have a number of different things like printers and what have you below 100 or I could have it above 200. So I think a good number I'm going to pick, uh, I, I'm just going to give it 70 because uh, uh, I have things on 50 and 60 right now. So I said DHCP no. I assigned it a static address of 70, a gateway of 192.168.1.1 it's my, my router. For primary DNS, I used the router. And then I, for secondary DNS, I used 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, 
which is the Google DNS server. And there's a couple other addresses for the Google DNS server. But uh, uh, this should work fine. I'll click Save Settings, and then I'm going to have to change my web browser to go to the right place. So now I type in 192.168.1.70, and I'm back at the configuration page. Okay, there's one more configuration that I, I forgot to show you. If you click on Admin Login, and then uh, uh, click to Advanced View, then go to System, you'll see some new uh, new uh, new things to, to add here. So, okay, I, I don't think I mentioned the net mask before. So the net mask has to be 255, 255, 255, 0. And you do that when you put assigning the, the, the static DA, uh, DHCP address, IP address. So um, there's also time servers. So uh, you can do like 0.pool.ntp.org. And you could maybe, for the secondary, maybe do 1 or 2. Dot pool.ntp.org or I have a different thing. I have a 2.north-america pool.ntp.org but uh, that was uh, one additional setting in order to have so this thing has the, the correct time. Okay now to use our, our SIP uh, uh, analog to, to internet phone adapter we have to have a, a VOIP provider. I looked around at, a, there's a whole bunch of them, many, many different VOIP providers. I chose VOIP.ms. So you can see the web address is VOIP.ms. Click on sign up, make an account, and, and of course remember your password for your account, and then um, go to the finances, charge, you know, put some money in your account, and then order a DID, which is a phone number. So after you, you order the, the DID, then you'll be all set. Okay, so after you're all set and you're at the, uh, you have your VOIP.ms account, uh, under support they have configuration for all the different devices and you want to select the, the PAP2. So uh, here we're at our web page, we type in our, our, my, the, uh, the like 192.168.1.70 or whatever the heck your IP address is. It doesn't have to be 70. It can be anything or you can use the DHCP. You don't have to set it to static like I did. Click on, on the admin and advanced view. Then you go over to line. Now this is the, all the stuff you have to do. Once you enter in this stuff, it's going to work for s placing phone calls and receiving phone calls. So uh, I have like three phones in the house and they're all hooked up to the line. I, pl I plugged my device to the phone line and now all the phones are active right now. So basically uh, uh, under the line one tab, NAT keep alive, yes you have to change that, NAT mapping slash traversal, select yes, enter in the proxy thing. There's a, a list of servers you know, uh, you could use Los Angeles, there's international ones, but it's anyway, it's whatever the, the server city is that they have from their list, .voip.ms. The registry expires, I, I guess the default was 3600, and they want to make it 80, 180, and then the, the proxy fallback interval 180. There's a thing that says display name, it's kind of blank, I don't know, I put private, I didn't want to put my name, on. I don't know what the display thing's all about. Uh, user ID, so after you do an account, they give you a user ID and your password, your pa uh, and uh, I saw that in two different places. There's like user ID and client ID. I put it in both places, the, the, the number they gave me. Password, it's whatever, you know, uh, eight digit uppercase, lowercase password you use when you made your, your account. So you put that in there. And then also for use DNS server, no, and then DNS server auto prefix, no. All the stuff in here, and the thing will work. Ta-da, we got a dial tone. Okay, here's what it looks like after it's all configured. You can see the, the light glow of the power button, the blinking of the ethernet. This is line one and line two. I've disabled line two. And line one seems to be nice and solid, so uh, here's what it looks like.